I think at its core, um, the reason why we got to where we are today, uh, I, w- I wouldn't say it's because of some like growth hacking tool or growth hacking strategy. I think at its root end of the day, the reason why we got to where we are today is our obsessive focus on over delighting and over satisfying every single stakeholders and within our business. So that involves the players, our content creators, the brands that we work with. It is this intense, and, and of course, uh, the employees that we employ, it is the intense focus of making sure that all these stakeholders are extremely delighted with the experience of working together with us. And to be honest, that is the simple strategy that we employ. <laughs> I see. So what are some of the challenges you face along your entrepreneur journey and how did you overcome them? Uh, I would say when, when, you are, when you're trying to do something different uh, or rather when you are in an industry that um, hasn't really developed and there's no roadmap to follow, um, it's quite hard to pitch to investors, right? I think back then uh, esports is still new and no one really understands uh, what it is, you know, playing games competitively, you know, that's not really a business. And that was really a challenge at the start, trying to, you know, figure out the business model, trying to figure out how do you grow a company on that and also figure out like, how do you pitch your story to investors? That was um, the key thing that kind of was a challenge for me at the start. And, you know, the way we overcome it, uh, I think back to my previous point, you know, we kind of really just focused on who our stakeholders are. So we started off as, you know, all these pro players and naturally we also expanded in to the talent business and the content business and creating content IPs out of uh, what we existingly built. And I guess it, it kind of takes its uh, flow over time. Mm, you mentioned about it's so difficult to pitch to investors who are new to this industry and also uh, less familiar with the industry, which is uh, meant to target the uh, Gen Z, right? So then what was your pitching strategy then? How did you go about convincing them to invest in you? So I think when it comes to new industry, um, people generally look for who is number one, who is the market leader. So for us, you know, when we were plotting out how we're gonna expand, uh, we kind of um, see where we want them to be um, in one year's time, and then you know kind of work backwards. So the goal was not just to be an esports team, but in Indonesia, but the goal was to be the number one esports organization in Southeast Asia. And we were questioning ourselves like, what does that look like? You know, in terms of scale, in terms of product offerings, in terms of quality of work in terms of public persona and you know having a target and working towards it was uh was what you know got us to our first fundraise mm, i see you you spoke about um uh, growing and expanding the business right uh, what are some of your internationalization strategy uh, did you start off here where did you start off and uh, how did the growth happen yeah so uh, we started off in Indonesia. Um, naturally, that's the largest market in Southeast Asia. And um, our uh, our main focus was to target the Southeast Asian market, right? Because um, that's where we have the, uh, uh, the best first mover advantage. Like we, we weren't even considering going overseas to like the West or China because, you know, the the ent- the barriers to entry are a lot higher. The capital requirements a lot higher as well. So we're focusing on Southeast Asia, starting with Indo, and then we expanded into other countries like Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and Philippines. So the whole narrative was to be the dominant market leader in Southeast Asia first. Um, at least having a white blanket kind of um, statement that we can say, and then drilling deeper into its roots. You know, how do we actually define and establish ourselves as the market leaders moving forward? That's interesting because most businesses will start in their home country, but you start outside first. 
and then slowly, you know, moving into the other places. Yeah. And maybe Singapore is just not, <laughs> not the key place. It's so small, right? Yeah. So um, how did you go about that? You know, starting overseas first. I mean, did you start off with a team already there? Your co-founder uh, is already based in Indonesia. They are so familiar with the industry. Or you started off hiring people there. Um, you know, how did you do your, your, your ground up initiatives, your um, market research and things like that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm the kind of entrepreneur that learns by doing. So when we enter Indonesia, to be honest, aside from, you know, paying the players and you know, paying the players, um, I pretty much did most of it. So social media, content editing, content filming, business development, sales, you know, I pretty much did. Oh, everything. Kind of how big were you guys? Or how? Well, you just, how... You just, it was just me and my partner, right? So, oh, okay. Then, um, it was it started off as a hobby you know kind of doing it for fun and uh yeah i mean we we didn't really want to we had no conviction yet right so we kind of had that phase where we needed to learn every single aspect of the of the business first so that we can you know over time develop the whole business model so i think for the first like one year, you know, I was like the team manager, the social media manager, the content editor, and everything. <laughs> totally understand. Wow, oh, and you were based in Indonesia, and yeah, I, I guess you don't have advantage of the language as well. <laughs> I was flying in and out as well, right? So, wow. Uh, and back then, when I first started, I was doing it um, in conjunction with my other uh, projects. So, I was flying in and out every week, making sure that. You know, can find some way to grow the company. So you were uh, sort of bootstrapping, right? So you you're paying players. You, you yeah. are you did you start to have um, um, sponsors already back then? You know, uh, commercial partners, clients already. Oh no, um, mm. I think for the first uh, three to four months, pretty much no revenue. Mm. But I mean, our cost was like you know like less than thousand dollars. You know, it's not much. <laughs> <laughs> um, back then, I was like super cheap, less than thousand dollar investment, and there's not much financial risk involved, lah, right? Um, but it took quite a lot of effort just to hit that first one dollar revenue. <laughs> so in the fourth month, uh, that finally came in, and I think that was the the most uh, fulfilling one dollar ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, okay. So, um, interesting. So, what would be your advice to startups that are looking at raising funds? At which point in time you realize that, okay, I think we've got enough. I think not so bad. We want to scale and this is time that we raise funds. At which point in time? So, raising funds. Um, I think if you're doing your first fundraise, uh, the first fundraise should never be targeted at uh, venture capital, right? Your first fundraise should always be towards your family and friends. And the reason is because when you take your family and friends' money, you are emotionally and individually attached. invested and attached to perform at your utmost best because you do not want to let your family down. Mm -hmm. So same funding, I believe, personal opinion, should always either be from yourself, your family, or your best friends. And wow. that's, that's how you kind of bootstrap at the start, right? That's how you kind of like, eh, every day you wake up, it's like, I cannot fail because if I fail, this is like the worst, right? Letting your friends and your family down. Yeah, they'll run away, right? Whenever they see you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't want to lose your friends and family, right? You don't want to lose the trust, <laughs> right? So that's why I think that's the, the first key. Um, when you go into uh, venture funding or working towards it, um, it should not be, um, you shouldn't be fundraising when um, the goal is to survive, right? So if you're struggling with survival or struggling with like product market fit, um, the goal shouldn't be to fundraise. The goal should be to figure out how do you get your product ready and get your product or company to a level where uh, when the money comes in, your first thought is, okay, how do I grow? And I think that's a mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make. Um, as they fundraise, they're still trying to figure out how to name, you know, keep the company in survival mode. And that will lead to a lot of issues, right? 
you know, with learning from the masters and et cetera, et cetera. 